Uh, <coughs> our portion today is Shalach Lecha, which means um, you send. Um, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Which means you send. And uh, the portion is from um, Numbers chapter 13, and it goes 13, 14, 15. Uh, <coughs> and uh, our Haftarah portion is from the book of Joshua, or Yahshua, and it's chapter 2. That chapter is 2 through 24, and it's really talking about uh, also the spies that went into Jericho 40 years later. Uh, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> chapter 13, uh, we'll just summarize as we, you know, we always do. We'll summarize here with uh, basically what what's going on with the narrative here. So, um, <clears throat> in chapter 13, uh, it begins with uh, Yahweh speaking to Moshe and telling him to send in 12 men into the land because remember that we're about a, I remember about a year and a half um, sort of removed from the uh, uh, from the exodus from the leaving Egypt and uh, <coughs> we uh, you know are, are about they have, have an opportunity actually to to uh, you know pretty directly go right into the land and uh, and uh, and possess it, and uh, so we uh, we pick this up in 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 chapter thirteen, and and twelve men are selected, and these are just not ordinary guys. They just didn't pick out you know, hey you you're going to be a spy. These are the heads of 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 the uh, groups of of uh, the the families. And you notice um, there's one from each tribe. One of them is is Yahshua, the son of Nun, who has been a uh, an assistant to Moshe from the beginning, from you know the time they left Egypt, and uh, from and he's from the tribe of Ephraim, and uh, we have Caleb, who is from the tribe of Yehuda. So. We kind of have two two spies there from Yehuda and Ephraim, um, and uh, and we have ten other men from other tribes um, that are also leaders. These are well respected men that are are going to uh, go out and uh, take a look at the land. So they go out and uh, they uh, kind of go all over the place and they find. Um, they find it is absolutely tremendous. It really is everything that Yahweh said it would. Um, they, uh, they're, this is the season of grapes, so they're towards the end of the growing season uh, there. And uh, they find these uh, enormous, uh, enormous fruits and, and, uh, and uh, it's just, uh, in fact, the, the, the fruit is so big, as we can see in, in chapter 13 and, and uh, verse 23, the fruit is so big, actually, a clump of grapes has to be carried on a pole between two men. It's, it's, that, gr it's that good. <laughs> and uh, so they're, everything that Yahweh said it was was great. They were spent 40 days in the land. They're all over it. And you would think <clears throat> things are great, right? Let's go and get this, get in there and take possession of it. But um, unfortunately, 10 of, the, 10 of the spies, 10 of the people that go in to spy the land out, um, just are really having a difficult time here. And part of that is, um, the uh, the land is filled with giants, and we see this in uh, in verse 28. And he says, "But the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are walled and very great. And we just saw the descendants of Anak there too. 
Those are the giants. And the Amalekites dwell in the south, where the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Yarden. And Caleb says, hey, this is great. We can, we are well able to uh, overcome them. We can, uh, we can make this work. Uh, and then it follow up in, in, uh, in verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able uh, to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave up the children of Israel an evil report of the land, which they had spied out, and the land through which they had gone through as spies, and a land eating up its inhabitants. All the people who we saw in it are men of great size. They're giants. And we saw there the Nephilim, sons of Anach, of the Nephilim. And we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we were, uh, we were in their eyes, as we, since so we were in their eyes. And just a kind of a side note I wanted to mention here about Nephilim. You know, we first hear about Nephilim back in, uh, in Genesis, uh, I think it's chapter 6. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and it, and it, and this is after the flood. Um, oh, sorry, it's before the flood. And uh, and in, in verse 4 it says, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and afterward, and the sons of Elohim came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. And those were mighty men, men who were of old, and men of name. So, you know, people make a doctrine out of this, and unfortunately, this is one thing I just want to ex sus um, ex uh, ex expel right now is, um, you know, the uh, the Book of Enoch is part of where this comes from, uh, an extra biblical book that uh, that people use to uh, create this doctrine, and basically the doctrine is that that uh, fallen angels or demons had um, relations with human beings and made these hybrid kinds of people, and they're called Nephilim. <clears throat> That's absolutely false. You know, there's, first of all, and it, we could go through a whole teaching on that about what that's, uh, how that's false, but the sons of Elohim, who they're talking about, we are sons of Elohim, right? The sons of Abraham are the sons of Elohim. The sons of uh, that have Yahweh's Holy Spirit in them are the sons of Elohim, human beings, um, and and Yahshua very clearly pointed out that that angels or demons simply do not have the capability to reproduce. They are individually created. They don't have any kind of, as Yahshua pointed out, they're they're neither they neither marry nor are given in marriage. They don't have the ability to to uh, to reproduce. So if if you get this in your head about you know that these Nephilim that the uh, the spies saw in in um, in the land as they were about to go in, they're just very very big people, very tall people. We saw that Goliath was you know a giant, and there were. There were giants, and there were people that were very, very tall, and uh, <clears throat> but they were not a hybrid race that were people mating with demons. So that's just a side note to uh, to keep in mind there. So um, <clears throat> so basically, what happens here in, in chapter thirteen and fourteen is there's this kind of back and forth of um, uh, Caleb and and uh, Caleb and and uh, Yahshua are trying their best to uh, calm the people down and help them, you know, help them have the faith that they can go in and and conquer this land because of all the things that Yahweh has done for them, and He can certainly, uh, certainly uh, to manage this. And we see this here: the congregation in chapter fourteen. They're listed up, their voices cry, the people wept all night, they're all afraid. And it's basically their fear of these giants. And so um, 
this is Yahshua now speaking here, Yahshua, and, and he says in verse 8, If Yahweh has delighted in us, then he shall bring us into this land and give it to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. And he's pleading with the, the congregation or the, the nation, and he says, Only do not rebel against Yahweh, uh, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. They, basically, we own them. We, we can do this. Um, and their defense has turned away from them, and, and Yahweh is with us. Do not fear them. Uh, but, so the congregation was said, no, we're going to stone you instead. We're not going in. We're not going to do this. And, uh, and then, so, you know, yeah, this is where Yahweh just is really, really, really disgusted with uh, the entire nation. And his intent is, he says, okay, that's it. I'm done with you. I'm, we're going to destroy this entire nation. I'll start it over again with the seed of Moshe. And Moshe falls on his face before Almighty Yahweh and pleads with him and says, please don't do that. Not for me, but, but because please don't do that because what's going to happen is the whole world is going to say, you know, this deity, Yahweh, brought these people out of Mitzram and he wasn't able to bring them into the land that he promised. And, uh, and you know, he... Uh, so Yahweh changes his mind. Yahweh changes his mind and, and, uh, and he says, okay, I'm not going to destroy everybody, but this generation who has these, he's, and he says now these 10 times, there's been 10 times they have basically rebelled against him and refused to uh, obey his voice. They are going to die in the wilderness. We're going to wander you around for 40 years until all of you are dead. And then your children will go in and possess the land. <clears throat> Caleb and Yahshua are the only ones who are going to be able to go in. So, you know, that, that is pronounced then on, in chapter 14 that all of these... Uh, they're going to wander for 40 years. And, and uh, here in, in, in chapter 40, uh, they go, well, maybe we were hasty. Maybe we should, we're just going to go in and we're going to go in anyway. And it's too late. It was too late to repent. In chapter, or verse 40, they say, they rose up early in the morning and went to the top of the mountain saying, we have indeed sinned and we shall go into the place which Yahweh has spoken of. But Moshe said, Why do you now transgress the mouth of Yahweh, since it does not prosper? Do not go up, lest you be smitten by your enemies, for Yahweh is not in your midst. Because the Amalekites and the Canaanites were there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned away from Yahweh, and it is not with you. So they went and tried to, um, tried to go in anyway. Um, so the Ark of the Covenant didn't go, and Yahweh didn't go with them. And in verse 45, we see the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that mountain came down and struck them and beat them down, even to Hormah. So a lot of people died because they just wouldn't listen. <clears throat> so chapter 15 uh, goes into a few offerings that, uh, um, that are made there. Um, and talking about uh, unintentional sin and the offerings for unintentional sin. And uh, in verse 32, there's uh, uh, <clears throat> a uh, description of what happens with a man that uh, deliberately, ref absolutely defiantly refused to uh, uh, keep the Sabbath. And, uh, and he, was, he was stoned. So again, death results in uh, in our disobedience or our transgression of the Torah, transgression of the law. And in chapter 30, uh, the end of the chapter talks about zitzitz. It talks about, you know, uh, this command to, uh, you know, to uh, put a, a physical reminder on our garments to remind us of the commandments. And, uh, <clears throat> It's a small thing, and, uh, um, you know, there's some people that just don't want to do it, and, uh, but, you know, it's there, and it's a command, and that's, 
um, what people should uh, hmm? yes it's a command for men to do so let's talk about what we can learn from this from this um, from this portion what can we uh, what, what can we get out of this so you know as we talk about uh, chapter 13 and 14 we basically have um, an opportunity to you know to uh, uh, possess the promised land to be able to possess the land that Yahweh um, has prepared for us and and what really prevented this from happening and it really kind of um, boils down to fear you know fear and um, so that's what I want to talk about today is fear and how fear all of us have it to some degree or another we all have you know, have to deal with that emotion. Um, it's something that, you know, Yahweh created us with that capability. But, um, but it's really how do we manage that? How do we uh, keep that uh, from uh, resulting in what happened to Israel and, you know, having to die in the wilderness and not being able to... Um, not being able to possess the holy or the uh, the promised land, so they uh, the fear that gripped the uh, the ten, which um, you know spread really to the entire nation, um, really was a fear of giants. So their fear of giants, and and so what I thought we would do is really take a look at so what giants are we afraid of? What kinds of giants appear in our life that prevent us from um, from listening or heeding Yahweh's word and and for being able to reap the benefits that He wants to give us? So He Yahweh wanted to be able to give the nation of Israel the promised land, you know, only a year and a half away from you know their wandering and. Uh, and a whole generation of, of people basically um, were denied that opportunity. They really denied themselves that opportunity uh, because of fear, the fear of these giants. So maybe we're afraid, um, you know, of something. Uh, there's some kind of giant in our lives. And sometimes when we come into, um, come into the faith, you know, and we just begin to learn about the Sabbath, the Sabbath is a giant, you know, it's a, uh, and, you know, if you've never really worked with this or at all, heard of this before, and, and then you read in the scriptures, you go, oh, wow, how am I going to do this? That is an impossible task. I have to work on the Sabbath. I have to, you know, what am I, my, my family going to do if I lose my job? And, and how, it's a, it's a giant in my life. And uh, another thing that can be giants is going to the feast. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that they go, I just, I can't do that. It's, you know, it's too far away. It's too much money. I can't take off work. You know, it's a giant that you just are afraid of and you can't really believe that Yahweh is going to make this work. Just like in, you know, going into the promised land that, that uh, this entire nation, two and a half million people, and remember how much they've seen already. They, they, they saw the Red Sea part. They saw all of these plagues. They saw this miraculous deliverance out of Egypt. And yet they couldn't believe that Yahweh could take care of these people, these giants that were in the land. They just couldn't wrap their head around that. And they, they were continually... Um, in a, in a spot where they were, uh, you know, they just couldn't re rely on Almighty Yahweh. And as we talked about last week, we know we talked a lot about, you know, the grumbling and the complaining and, and uh, how we, how Israel, you know, we're in the middle of a desert, we're given all the water they needed and all the food they, they needed. They, you know, everybody uh, had enough to eat. You know, but it was manna. It wasn't, it wasn't what they wanted. It was something else. 
So complain, 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 complain. And, and, uh, and they just weren't able to wrap their head around submitting to Yahweh's will. Um, and so that's something I think we were kind of, we, we, we uh, really want to take a look at in our own lives is what giants are we facing? Sometimes, you know, it, there's giants that are, that are there when we first learn of, you know, the truth and, you know, we face some giants. Um, other times, we, you know, we, we face giants, you know, as we continue to, to grow in the faith and we come across them. The Yahweh's uh, pillar of cloud and fire will lead us to a place where we go, oh no, more giants. There's something else that's going on that I hadn't thought of before. Maybe we're afraid of what our family or friends or coworkers or clients will think of us if we wear zitzits or, you know, cover our heads. That's, you know, something that, that can be a giant for some people. You know, it can be somebody, something that says, I can't, I can't wrap my head around that. I can't make that work. Maybe we're, we're not, we're not, uh, we're afraid of not being able to pay our bills if we, if we tithe and, you know, We've run into people that, you know, been in a walk for a long time and still, you know, don't get this concept of tithing. And, uh, you know, giants come to us in many different forms. So that's a couple of, you know, obvious small examples. But, um, but every one of us, if we really kind of look at ourselves, if we really kind of examine our walk, we can probably identify some giants that are preventing us from being able to uh, to uh, you know be able to receive this tremendous blessing that Yahweh wants to bestow upon us. And uh, so that's what we want to talk about today: is fear of giants and fear, and and really what Yahweh has to say about fear. And um, what, uh, how, how, how really important it is. And we continually go through, you know, the scriptures and we'll see things like, do not be afraid. You know, I'm going to just back up here to, this is in my notes, but I just kind of thought of this um, here. And we're in Luke 8. Remember in Luke 8, we just read as our evangel today. And just look at how many times it says here, don't be afraid. Right? And uh, we look at the, the incident of uh, uh, Yahshua and, and the disciples in a boat, right? And what happened? They were afraid because the wind and the waves, and they thought they were going to sink, and they said, Master, save us, you know? And what did Yahshua say? He said, you know, where's your faith? Where's your belief? Why are you afraid? Um and then farther down, we have uh, the uh, the people with the demons, you know, the, that, uh, the demons in Gardenez. And they said, and they were really afraid of what happened there. Um, <clears throat> the, and also, if you look at uh, the, uh, the woman who touched uh, Yahshua's zitzit and... Uh, and uh, she was afraid, but she overcame her fear there, and she said, um, "She she was she came she was trembling and falling down bef before him." And Yahshua gave her encouragement and said, "Take courage, don't be afraid." Um, and uh, here's the last one. There was another one here about being afraid. Oh. <clears throat> The, the synagogue ruler's daughter, when she was uh, uh, dead, you know, she was sick, and, they, and then the letter said she was dead. And Yahshua says, do not be afraid, only believe. So what we're going to do is kind of connect this fear and belief and how these things kind of work, and, uh, work uh, against one another. And uh, <clears throat> we're, we're kind of going to examine that a little bit. So the fear of giants, um, you know, in our life can, can really destroy the relationship that we have with Yahweh. 
um, you know, a coward puts his perceived self-interest above the wishes of his sovereign. Our sovereign is Yahweh. Uh, fear becomes what we bow down to rather than Yahweh. Fear is, <clears throat> is really that cowardice which in the last resort chooses self and safety before Messiah. Fear can cause us to reject our Messiah and eventually our salvation if not addressed. So <clears throat> what we're not talking about here with fear, we're not talking about is you know, an emotion where we, we think, how can I, you know, get past this? Fear is, we're talking about a fear of self-preservation. And this, uh, we see this in, in uh, you know, Israel here and in going into the, the, uh, the land. They, you know, were afraid of being destroyed by these giants. <clears throat> So how is how is uh, fear addressed in the in the scriptures? Let's take a, a, a little bit more of a look at this, and uh, let's go to Revelation twenty one eight. Here's where um, you know you might use this to refute the idea that someone says, "Well, it's not a sin to be f afraid." <clears throat> it's and that that's true it's 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 not a sin to be afraid what it's the sin comes in is acting on the fear and allowing uh unbelief to prevent us from from acting so let's look at revelation chapter 28 this is a list of some 21 and we're in uh verse 8 <clears throat> this is contrasting the ones that are overcome will inherit, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh. But in verse 8, you see, here's a list of things, of some attributes or some character, um, character attributes of people that will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And one of those is, but as for the cowardly, and untrustworthy. The King James says, but the fearful and unbelieving. And those two are at the top of the list there. And abominable, people who commit abominations and murderers and those who uh, whore or fornicate and drug sorcerers and idolaters and all there, all the false, all the liars, <clears throat> is what King James said. Uh, their part is in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. <clears throat> so is it a sin to be afraid or to have fear? Um, let's look at uh, Nehemiah uh, and just go to chapter 6 of Nehemiah. So he's kind of faced with a situation here with some people that really want to kill him. And uh, he's pretty much on to them and figures that they are plotting to, uh, to, uh, to kill him. And uh, we're just going to pick up this. You can read chapter 6 a little bit and kind of get the context of that. But essentially the context is there's a plot to kill Nehemiah. And he's, of course, the governor of the... Uh, the exiles who have returned to Jerusalem. He's building the wall. He's building the uh, the thing here and uh, and getting them. Um, <clears throat> and you know the idea was to uh, to make to to first of all make Nehemiah afraid to to not act. And uh, here he says in verse 9, we'll pick it up in verse 9, For all of them were making us afraid, saying, Let their hands slacken for the work, and, not, and it not be done. But now make my hands strong. And when I came to the house of Shemayah, son of Adelaiah, son of Metubtabiel, who was restrained and said, Let us meet together in the house of Elohim, inside the Hechel, or inside the temple, 
Let us close the door of the Hekel, for they are coming to kill you. By night, they are coming to kill you. So the, the advice was to Nehemiah, go in the temple and hide, so they won't dare try to kill you in the temple. And so <clears throat> Nehemiah says, and I said, should a man like me flee? And who is there like me who would, not, who would go into the Hechel to save his life? I do not go in. And see, I perceive that Elohim had not sent him. This was, you know, the people that were uh, convincing him to try to go into the, uh, the temple. But he spoke this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Because he was a hireling and, sh should, and that, that I should be afraid and do so and shall sin. And so they should give me an evil name to reproach me. So here we see that Nehemiah recognizes that acting on that fear, acting on that fear and not believing in Yahweh's protection was sin. We also see in Romans chapter 14, let's just turn over there, uh, Romans chapter 14, <clears throat> where we're talking about basically belief or faith is what we have to overcome our fears. And Shaul points out to us here in, uh, in Romans chapter 14 and in verse 23, Three says, but he who doubts if he, this is talking mainly about um, people with uh, eating clean meats, but that might have been, you know, uh, offered to idols. But the point here is, is um, that he who doubts if he eats is condemned because it is not of belief. It is not of faith. And all that is not of faith is sin. Not everything that is not of belief is sin. So when we fail, when we don't trust Almighty Yahweh, when we don't believe in His Word, He's telling us that's a sin. So what what causes this fear of sin? As um, we see this in Revelation 21, uh, it points to the answer is basically unbelief, unbelief, or or a failure to believe. Let's go to, to uh, Psalm 78. And this is pretty interesting because there's a lot that this says about this. Really, this whole psalm is talking about um, about, uh, about faith. And uh, where I want to pick this up is uh, this talks about a lot of what happened in Israel and also what we've talked about in these Torah portions. He says in verse, we'll pick this up in verse 8, and do not be like the fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation which did not prepare its heart, whose spirit was not steadfast to Elohim. <clears throat> we're, we started in verse 8, but we're just going to kind of, pick out a, a few of these verses here as we um, just remember this is recounting um, some of this uh, these trials in the wilderness um, and basically about these these sins of rebellion and uh, here Therefore, this is verse 21. Therefore, Yahweh heard and he was wroth. He was angry. Uh, so a fire was kindled against Jacob and his displeasure also came up against Israel. Remember we talked yes, last week about the grumbling and the fire around the outsides of the camp. Because they did not believe in Elohim, neither did they trust in his deliverance. Did not believe, didn't trust in his deliverance. They were afraid. He had, be, he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna on them to eat, and he gave them the grain of heaven. Just like we talked about last week. Um, so if we kind of go down a little farther here to uh, verse 32. And in spite of all this, in spite of all the things they saw, they still sinned, and they did not believe in his wonders. 
So he ended their days in a breath, their years in trouble. When he killed them, he sought, they sought, then they sought him, and they returned and did earnestly seek El. And they remembered that Elohim was their rock, and the Most High El, their Redeemer. <clears throat> so, you know, this is, again, talking more about, um, about uh, connecting belief and, and, uh, and, and fear. So fear then is a result of a lack of faith and not believing in Yahweh's power and especially his love and willingness to act on our behalf. The fearful that are, are that way because they lacked faith. Yahshua reveals this. We saw that in, in, uh, in Luke 8, but it's also in Mark 4, 40. He said, you know, to the men in the boat, why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? So when Yahshua saw fear, his immediate response was to question the person's faith. Fear is a very human reaction. And as Messiah indicates, how we respond depends on our degree of faith. When faith is weak or non-existent, fear becomes a controlling factor rather than the faith. We begin to live by sight and not by faith. We see that in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Talking about living by faith, not by sight, not by what we see. We also, and without faith, we cannot be saved. Uh, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those whom he did not obey? So we're going to take a look at Hebrews 3 here, which is talking about this very same incident, this very same thing that we see in this Torah portion. Um, <clears throat> and we're, this is building up to, to, you know, to chapter 4. But he says, um, begin, we're going to begin in verse 12. And he says, in uh, the writer of Hebrews in chapter 3, and in verse 12 says, Look out, brothers, lest any of you lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief in falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness, deceivableness of sin. So wasn't that exactly what Caleb and Yahshua were doing to the other, with the other ten and the whole nation, right? They were encouraging them, trying to help them understand believe that Almighty Yahweh is well able to, uh, to help us go in and take this land that he promised us. So let's, uh, let's kind of skip down here to uh, verse 18. It says, And whom did he swear that he would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? Okay, so those those. That ge whole generation who would not obey, who would not cross over the Jordan and were afraid of these giants, that's, that's who verse 18 is talking about. He said he, he swore that they would not enter his rest. And what happened? They died in the wilderness. So we see that they were unable to enter in because of unbelief. The unbelief was not able, was not, uh, was, was overcame uh, that and fueled that fear. And so that's really, <clears throat> really very important for us to keep in mind because, you know, all of us have things we're afraid of. All of us have things that, you know, we have, we have giants uh, in our life. But this verse of, the, we're talking specifically about 12, uh, about this wicked heart of unbelief. This is not talking about normal unbelief and it's fruit of fear that all people have. And fearfulness is, is a common human condition. As our creator Yahweh understands that doubts will creep in now and then. And it, it speaks to a heart that's controlled by doubt, by unbelief, leading to fear that can cause us to cut and run from Almighty Yahweh. That kind of heart will drag a person down just as Peter's doubt. Remember when he was walking on the water? He, when, he had, when he believed he could, he could do that, 
When he believed he could walk on the water, he did. But what happened? Waves started coming at him and he became, what, afraid. He became afraid and said, oh no, I'm going to drown. I'm going to die, right? And then what happened? He sunk in the water. <clears throat> so that's, that will drag us down. But we all struggle with doubt and fear. And, you know, in Mark uh, chapter 9, there's an incident there that Yahshua addresses and uh, that <clears throat> a lot of us, I think, can, can use this and, 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 uh, and beseech Almighty Yahweh for this kind of attitude. Let's look at Mark in chapter 9. And this is uh, talking about this, uh, just for context here, um, <clears throat> we're going to look at uh, verse 24. Um, this is um, a father who brings a child to Yahshua, and this, this, uh, this child is, uh, is um, influenced by demons or affected by demons, and, and he throws himself in the fire and throws himself in the water and things like that. And Yahshua says to him in verse 23, if you are able to believe, all is possible to him who believes. <clears throat> so the father was telling Yahshua, I believe that you can, you can heal him. And verse 24 is something I think that all of us can relate to, right? He says, immediately the father of the child cries out and says, it with tears. He says, I believe, Master. Help my unbelief. Isn't that what we all need to do is battle that unbelief that we have? Because it's sometimes hard, especially when we're going through, you know, we're fighting really big giants. And it's hard for us to do that. We want to believe, but... <clears throat> Sometimes it's, it's hard on our own to be able to work up that faith. And we can't really work it up ourselves. We really need Almighty Yahweh working in us, Yahshua, the faith of Yahshua, helping us to develop that faith. <clears throat> so getting back to this, uh, going into the rest of the kingdom, uh, the rest... Our rest is Yahweh's kingdom. Just as the lack of faith or unbelief barred ancient Israel from entering their rest, a lack of faith can bar us from entering ours if we keeping us out of the family of Yahweh. Without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. We, we see that it's very clear in Hebrews 11.6. Uh, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. We are seeing that sin is not the result of weakness as we normally think of. We think of as weak in the flesh. Yes, there is weakness, but what is the root, the sin, the root cause? And when you look at it closely, the root of sin is unbelief, is not believing that, uh, that Yahweh will work in our best interest, will do the best thing for us. As Israel's example in, indicates, unbelief or lack of faith causes and leads to producing sin in our lives, posting, pointing to a real foundational weakness, the lack of faith. And we again, that brings us to, you know, whatever is not of faith is of sin, which Shaul tells us in Romans 23. So <clears throat> another bad thing about fear is fear is contagious. And uh, fear can um, really spread. Um, we have seen that in the last since uh, middle of March, how, how fear can spread in, uh, you know, basically spread all over the world, but especially in this country. But it spread, fear especially uh, was, uh, was spreading in, uh, in, in Numbers or uh, Bemidbar chapter 14 there. And we see that, you know, those 10 fearful individuals, you know, that, that fear spread to the entire nation. 
And just as the children of Israel panicked, fear can be like a virulent disease that sweeps through a group and can kill just as surely as any deadly contagious disease. In our time, for example, the cycle of fear, panic, and death is, you know, we see that in many times. You know, there's a stampede and people get, you know, trampled to death because of, you know, a fear and some, something uh, happening. So... <clears throat> so we have the example of Yahshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb on the one hand, and the other ten uh, on the other hand. And let's look at some of the things that Yahweh has said through the through the the centuries to help us um, help us understand this. Uh, one of the first things that Yahweh said to Abraham. To Abram before he was Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. He said to, to, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 uh, verse 1, he says, do not be afraid. We can keep that in mind for ourselves. Keep that in, front, in, in mind for ourselves. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward is exceedingly great. He means that for us too, as heirs to the promise of Abraham. Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're, we're not going to read through this whole thing, but you can look at this in verses 21 to 31. <clears throat> and it's talking about this same incident. Uh, talking, you know, 40 years later, recounting this uh, 38, 37 and a half, 38 and a half years uh, later talking about um, the same incident. We pick this up in verse 26. He says, uh, but you would not go up and rebelled against the mouth of Yahweh your Elohim and grumbled in your tents and said, because Yahweh is hating us, he has brought us out of the land of Israel, Mitzrayim, to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. So, <clears throat> again, there that fear of these um, in verse 28, and it says, Where are we going to? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to the heavens. We saw the sons of the Anakim there too. And I said, Having no dread, uh, said to you, Have no dread or fear of them. Yahweh or Elohim, who is going before you, he does fight for you. That's that's the part that they couldn't get their heads around. They couldn't believe that Yahweh would really do that. And what did that happen? What happened then is it resulted in their death. We don't want that to happen to us, to result in our death. Because, you know, for us, this is eternal death. It would be the second death that would prevent us from being able to enter into the promised land and be able to... Uh, be able to uh, 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 have salvation. In Deuteronomy 31, also Yahweh talks about uh, do not fear nor be discouraged. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 and 8, talking about be strong and be courageous and do not fear. There's a lot of Psalms that address this. Psalm 27 is one of them. 27.1 says, Yahweh is my light and my deliverance. Whom should I fear? Yahweh is the refuge of my life. Whom should I dread? Again, we, we really have to uh, get our minds in a spot where we can believe and trust that, no, that Yahweh is never going to do anything or allow anything to happen to us that isn't the very best thing for our salvation. We have to, <clears throat> when we have that kind of mindset, <clears throat> we can face really anything. We can face, you know, persecution. We can fi face even death. We can face all kinds of giants that come at us and um, <clears throat> with the faith that Yahweh wants the very best for us, that Yahweh's, our life is in Yahweh's hands. Um, 
Yahshua points this out to us. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> this is some really important instruction for us, I think, that we can really take uh, to heart when we're facing giants, when giants are in our way and, and, uh, and uh, threatening us. So this is Yahshua talking in Matthew chapter 10, and, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to begin in uh, verse 16. And this is talking about uh, the, uh, the people that he sent out uh, ahead of him to, uh, to prepare these cities and towns that he was going to preach in. And, and he says, See, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they shall deliver you up to Sanhedrins and flog you in your congre congregations. Uh, who wants to sign up for that? That's, that's a pretty tough thing to... And he's telling them ahead of time, this is what's going to happen to you. And you shall be brought before governors and sovereigns for my sake and as a witness to them and to the nations. You know, is some of that possibly in our future? I mean, we can see people right now, you know, getting really violent and really angry about towards people of faith. Um, you know, right now they're tearing down statues and they're burning things and they're, they're uh, looting and, and causing a lot... Do you, think it wouldn't be, you know, in their, uh, their thinking that to, to get their hands on believers like us? Yeah, of course it would, because they hate that kind of thing. But when they do deliver you up, do not worry, or don't be afraid, about how or what you should speak. For it shall be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking in you. And brother shall deliver up brother to death, and father his child, and children shall rise up against parents, and shall put them to death. And you shall be hated for all for my name's sake. And he shall have endured to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For truly I say to you, you shall no means have gone through the cities of Israel before the son of Adam returns. A taught one is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the taught one to become like his teacher and a servant like his master. They have called the master the house of Beelzebub. How much more those of his household? And here Yahshua tells us, Therefore, do not fear them. For what is covered shall be revealed. Whatever is hidden shall be made known. And I shall, what I say to you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul or the being, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the being and the body in Gehenna. He's talking about fear of Yahweh, not fear of men. And here's really the crux of this, and this is the kind of thing that really I hope hits home. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, a penny, a very small amount? And not one of them falls to the ground without your father. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear. You are worth more than many sparrows. Yahshua is telling us that everything that happens to us, everything, the father is completely and totally aware of that. He's able to, just like as when Yahshua is being delivered to be, you know, to be murdered, you know, he said, my father can send 12 legions of angels here and, and, uh, and deliver me if, if I asked him to. You know, he's certainly capable of delivering us. We have to understand, though, that what we're going through might be the very best thing for our own salvation. We have to, something we have to, to, to go through. Yahweh is certainly capable of delivering us. The reason he's not delivering us is maybe a couple of different things. Number one, it might be that we just don't believe enough. Number two, it might be that Yahweh needs, wants this trial to help us grow, to help us be 
uh, more prepared to, for, for the kingdom. He's completely aware of it. He'll never let anything happen to us. And we just, we just read this here. He knows what's going on in our, he'll never let anything happen to us that isn't the best thing for us. He says, do not fear. You're worth more than many sparrows. And we really, really want to keep that in mind as we, we face these giants and, and, and we face these fears. It's not that we're not, that, that we have uh, fear of the giants. Of course, you know, giants can be pretty scary. It's what, what do we do with that? What do we do with that fear? And how do we turn that around to the glory of Almighty Yahweh? Psalm 56 is another spot. Well, let's go first to Luke 12, 32. We won't turn there, but there's a, the, another statement that Yahweh, Yahshua, um, makes to us about the Father's care for us. He says in, in Luke 12, verse 32, he says, Do not fear, little flock. Do not fear, little flock, because your Father did delight to give you the rain. In the King James, it'll say, Do not fear, little flock, because it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants us to be part of his family. He wants us. He says, Don't be afraid. It's going to work out. Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4. In the day that I am afraid, I trust in you. In Elohim, his word I praise. In Elohim, I have trusted. I do not fear. What could flesh do to me? Shaul tells us in uh, his letter to Timothy about the power that Almighty Yahweh has given to given to us to combat this fear that we all have, that we, we all have to deal with it. But in 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy. In chapter 1 and, and uh, verse 7, he says, For Elohim has not given us a spirit of fear, or of cowardice. That's not the spirit he gave to us. He says, but he did give us a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. Opposite of cowardice and fear. And in Romans 8.28, this is just another witness that tells us about Yahweh's love for us and how much he cares for us and how we can overcome these fears. In Romans 8.28, and we all know this one by heart, he says, And we know that all matters work together for good. All matters. Even things that at the time seem very difficult, seem fearful. We see giants around us. And we think, you know, this is hopeless. But it's not. It's not hopeless. Because all matters work together for good. Not for everybody, but for those who love Elohim and to those who are called according to his purpose. Yahweh's never going to let something happen to us that isn't the best thing for our eventual salvation and deliverance. Shaul gives us some more help here in Philippians chapter 4. This is another one that we, we all know by heart. We've heard this hundreds and hundreds of times, but it's hard to grab a hold of this when we're in the middle of this, in the middle of, of uh, these trials, in the middle of something that's terrifying us, these giants in our lives. It says, Do not worry at all, but in every matter, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known to Elohim. And if we do that, the next verse will happen. It says, if, then. And the peace of Elohim which sur surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and mind through Messiah Yahshua. Verses 6 and 7. Don't worry. If you, if you don't worry, this is what the result will be. 
Psalm 91 is another very, very big encouragement that we can go through. And this has been applied. Uh, many people have quoted this. In fact, it's on a sign here on Highway 41 at a uh, truck repair place. Uh, this verse, uh, or this, uh, this psalm, Psalm 91. Let's just look at that. He says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. That's us, right? That's us. Who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 is saying of Yahweh, my refuge and my stronghold, my Elohim in whom I trust. For he delivers you from the snare of the trapper, from the destructive pestilence. He covers you with his feathers, and under his wings you take refuge. His truth is a shield and armor. You are not afraid of the dread by night, of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, of the destruction that ravages at midday. So all of these different giants that might be affecting you. Maybe the giant is, you know, a very big health trial. Maybe the giant is, you know, something else. But it's, it's, we, we have here in this psalm the, uh, the answer and how, how to, how to deliver that, how to, uh, to, uh, to get our through, self through that. Verse 9, because you have made Yahweh my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. No evil befalls you, and a plague does not come near your tent. For he commands his messengers concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You tread upon lion and cobra and young lion and serpent. You trample underfoot, because he cleaves to me in love. Therefore I deliver him. I set him on high, because he has known my name. When he calls on me, I answer him. I am with him in distress. I deliver him and esteem him a long life. I satisfy him. I show him my deliverance. So, you know, that's a, a tremendous blessing, a tremendous comfort for us as we go through these trials. But remember that we, we really, sometimes these trials last longer than we ought, think they ought to. And we really, uh, as Psalm 91 really points out, is to really trust in Almighty Yahweh that how that is is going to work out. Um, we can see that uh, again in Pro Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but who trusts in Yahweh is set on high. As we talk about this this uh, difference between you know the the emotion of fear and the coward cowardice uh, cowardliness that would basically make us take action to save our lives, Yahshua talked about that in in uh, Matthew uh, chapter sixteen. And he's talking about how we view our lives. And we'll pick this up in chapter 16, verse 24. And he says, Then Yahshua said to his taught ones, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his stake, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life, you know, like the people in, Israel that wanted to save their lives rather than crossing the Jordan taking possession of the land um, they were taking action their, their, their behavior was such that they were taking uh, that they were uh, trying to save their lives so in verse 25 it says forever wishes to save his life shall lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it for what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For the son of Adam is coming in the, in the esteem of his father with his messengers, and he shall reward each one according to your works. So this is 
really an important thing for us to keep in mind about our physical lives. And maybe that's, you know, a health trial that's, that's really focused on that. And, and sometimes these health trials result in, you know, physical death. But if we run this race with Yahweh's help and Yahweh allows us to go to sleep because of that, we we've completed our journey. We've completed what he's he set out to for us to do. And maybe, you know, the that trial is not about us. Maybe it's about the other people around us praying about us, praying for it, and fasting. And and uh, but we we really don't want to have the mindset. Well, we'll do anything to stay alive. John chapter 14 and verse 27, he says, My peace I leave with you. This is Yahshua speaking. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives, and do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So that's what we have with the trust and belief we have in Almighty Yahweh, is with this fear that we have of these giants all around us is not so much, is not such a big deal. <clears throat> Here's an example of, of Shaul. It was uh, uh, and he was brought before Caesar. Yahshua speaks to him and says in, in Acts chapter 27 and verse 24, he says, Do not be afraid, Shaul. You have to be brought before Caesar. And look, Elohim has favorably given you all those who sail with you. So Yahshua is telling him, you know, don't be afraid, you know, and what happened with this this trial that that uh, that Shaul went through when he was arrested and taken to Rome and put in prison and all this stuff? It ended in his death. He was actually killed or martyred, uh, executed for the faith. And and Yahshua is telling him, "Do not be afraid." Here's something else Yahshua tells us in Revelation chapter two and verse ten. Revelation, let's just go to chapter 2. And this is uh, one of the, uh, the uh, communications Yahshua is given to the messengers of these assemblies to deliver to these assemblies. And in chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, uh, he's saying, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. See, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison in order to try you, and you shall have pressure ten days. Be trustworthy unto death. That's pretty big, right? Be trustworthy, be faithful, have faith unto death, and I shall give you the crown of life. So that supports, again, you know, this physical life that we have here, this is a training ground. It's a training course that we're in right now. Yahweh will determine when it's finished for us, when we've completed it, when we're about to graduate. And that might be, you know, the end of our physical life. It may come in a violent way. It may come in a, in a, in a way that's, that's uh, through sickness or illness or something like that. But we have to be faithful to the end. As we pointed out many times, this walk isn't easy, but we're always given a choice. So we can choose to be like Yahshua and Caleb, or we can choose to be like the other ten. We can choose life as a result of faith and obedience, or we can choose death, which is the result of fear and unbelief. So I hope this has really helped you to, to try to you know, get a, an, uh, an understanding about uh, what Yahweh is teaching us with, uh, with uh, overcoming this, you know, this natural fear that we have, helping us to use the faith that he gives to us to be able to overcome this and not end up the same way that, you know, two and a half million people that weren't able to enter the promised land and they died in the wilderness. We want to be the ones like Joshua and Caleb who are able to go in to the promised land and receive the blessings that Almighty Yahweh gave and wants to give to us. 
So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, and we'll just uh, end it right there.